Well, I was excited when I saw this guy's name on the marquee. A lot of you know the name, Victor Bartley. Spent most of his time in the Western Hockey League with the Kamloops Blazers. Finished up with the Regina Passer. He joins us there. Hang on, Bart. I'm going to go through your your uh, resume here. <gasps> All right. <laughs> I just no. I don't. We only got two hours. A hundred and. <laughs> 121 games in the National Hockey League, mostly with the Nashville Predators, nine games with the Montreal Canadiens, and he settled down in Music City, I understand, where it's Christmas has come early. How you doing, Victor? I'm doing great, Rod. Good to hear from you. Good to, good to hear from you, too, Matt. Listen, we got a lot of friends in Nashville, as you probably know, Stu Grimson, Terry Crisp, guys like that, and I know what a big family that Preds uh, alumni is, but you guys have been through some... Real struggles, COVID being one, the tornadoes just before COVID. Can you tell me today how Nashville is uh, 10 months into this pandemic? Uh, in terms of economy, they're actually sitting quite quite well right now. Uh, I mean, tourism started to pick back up slowly about a month and a half ago. But overall, I mean, we're back to 50% capacity again. Uh, for one thing, building in the city has never slowed down. Uh, the economic boom in terms of real estate has skyrocketed here builders uh have been building non-stop action they've actually had their best last two quarters in the last decade right now so in terms of that it's going great but uh yeah i mean we had we had those tornadoes come through here and uh take apart most of east nashville it was pretty sad to see because that area was on the rise big time and then all those small businesses just got hammered by the hurricane and it just took apart uh nashville like we haven't seen since the floods of uh it was about a decade ago the flood came through and took out all of bridgestone all of downtown but other than that, they're rebuilding right now, and, you know, things are getting better. Hopefully uh, the, this vaccine gets rolling here, and we start to uh, see some positive strides. Bart, there's a lot of things I can get to with you, but I just want to tell our viewers, your time with Nashville was 2012 to 2016. As I recall, pretty good then. What was going on in Nashville with the Predators? What are your memories of playing with that club? Uh, it was pretty crazy, actually. Uh, well, I'd started in Milwaukee, and when I got called up, we were still kind of a transition phase, but uh, they had all the right pieces there and all the young guys, you know, they had the Ryan Ellis's, the Matias Ack Holmes, Roman Yossi's, all those guys there. And uh, their forward core was coming in, Philip Forsberg, Arvidsson, Yarncroft, all those young guys that are now superstars in the league were only, you know, 19 to 21 years old at the time. And now they're, they're all thriving, you know, making high end salaries and putting up 50, 60 points a year. So, Overall, I mean, when I first came in the league, I realized I was like, oh, crap, I'm coming up against these guys right now. My time's probably going to be limited here in Nashville, and that's how it ended up going. But uh, my time there, I'll never take for granted. Uh, myself, my family, we love the city of Nashville, and that's why we kind of made this place home. I'm going to come back to Nashville in a minute as to why you settled there and stuff. But I talked about your dub time, Kamloops and Regina. Did you realize at the time... Those are the two crown jewel franchises of the Western Hockey League, or were you too young to realize what it mean, meant to play with those two teams? I think when you're in the, the heat of it, you don't really take it as much for, you don't really appreciate it as much as you should until you look back on your career a couple of years later and realize, you know what, you really did have it great where you were. And uh, overall, just looking back on the experience, I think we can all say that you're never going to truly appreciate it in the moment because you're always living on edge and you're always trying to be the best that you can. And it's not truly till after you realize that that's how great of a spot it was and a great, two great cities, two great organizations. And I uh, could have been more thrilled to play for both and especially to finish my career out in uh, Regina. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. A lot of memories, as you know, and that Pats team put a pennant up in the Brand Center rafters. I'm not sure if it was called the Brand Center at the time or not, but Katie Fleury writes in. She says, hello, Victor. Miss watching you play. From Craig Monroe, he says, my God, the D in Nashville. Don't forget Jones, Weber, and Suter. Oh, yes. Good times in Nashville. But the one thing, Bartz, is that I think a lot of hockey fans forget. The Preds missed the playoffs the first eight or nine years they were in the NHL. Like, they were awful. And I think that led to the Golden Knights, you know, with the rules being tweaked. Because the NHL didn't want to have that again. Like, in that market, they went through hell to get to where they are there. Do they still talk about that? Yeah, they really talk about the heydays of even just growing the game in Nashville because at the, at the end of the day, free agents didn't want to come to Nashville at the time, and now it's a prime market to come to, let alone there's no state tax in Nashville, so players now see the financial benefit of playing in Nashville, especially with the escrow being as high as it is right now, and just the destination in general, how the economy is growing here so much, and people see the quality of life you're going to get here. 
And that's why players now would love to come to Nashville versus back in the day. They didn't really want to. Well, and the amazing thing is, Darren, you're going to have to help me out with who that alum was of the Preds that came on our show. We did a show from Losers um, Sports Bar a couple of years ago. He'll he'll look at it. Dan Kesmer. Uh, Dan Kesmer. Well, Dan Kesmer. Dan, Dan Kesmer. Dan Kesmer. Kesmer. I met, I he met was Kesmer, a. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, I met him in the lounge actually uh, last two years ago when they were playing Dallas in the playoffs. I had met Dan there randomly and. We were talking, it's, a, it's actually a funny joke. So there's not a ton of alumni for the Preds that are in Nashville. More are starting to come back now. But uh, at the time, I had met Dan. Somebody introdu- introduced me to him and said, Dan's like, oh, I've been taking advantage of the, of the alumni lounge for years. He's like, what's funny is, he's like, I probably have the least amount of games of all players ever played. That would be Dan Kesmer. Oh, man, it was awesome. Yeah. And Losers Sports Bar was so much fun. You said you liked that place? Yeah, back in, uh, probably shouldn't say this, but back in my playing days, I probably spent a little too much time at Losers and Winners and <laughs> overall. But I mean, at the end of the day, it was, uh, I remember my uh, captain in Milwaukee, Scott Ford, who's now the assistant coach of Milwaukee Admirals, he had come up and said, he's like, Bart, if you're ever in a situation where you can just take advantage of your social status and you know, really live life, go do it. And I was, do- I was living life at that point. You know, I was probably shouldn't have been doing it at 24, 25 and been a little more focused on, on the game, but, uh, just going out and meeting the people that I met and having the times that I had, it was hard to say no to. Oh, what great advice, eh, Bartz? <laughs> There's veteran <laughs> Being honest. mentorship right there. And great memory, by the way, oh, Dan yeah. Kesmer, because if you'd put a gun to my head, I wouldn't have remembered Dan Kesmer. Uh, Craig Monroe uh, writes and he says, I heard Nashville is like a country version of Vegas. Can't wait to visit. It's that, Craig, and it's cheaper. <laughs> right, it's way cheaper. Hotels are cheaper. Booze is cheaper. Food's cheaper. Bar, oh, it's just an unbelievable city. I can't wait to get back there. Um, what are you doing now? <laughs> what are you doing now, Barts? Uh, well, basically, just uh, almost debating on retiring right now. I played the last couple of years over in the KHL for the Coonland Red Stars, but uh, due to COVID, all the salaries were slashed big time. And uh, I've got a wife and daughter and a baby boy on the way, so it didn't make sense for us financially and as a family to travel back to Moscow and just being in the situation with COVID right now, we just didn't think it was a a good option. So uh, basically we decided to stay back here and maybe just retire from hockey. But a few years back, I started a real estate investment company called 64 investments. It all started from my number in Nashville being 64. And at the time I had spent my first two years salary from national predators on rental property in general, all across music row, midtown, right next to losers winners. Uh, Broadway, you name it. I had bought a ton of real estate at the time and I could just see how things were going in the city of Nashville. So I bought a ton of rentals, learned the the market, learned the game, figured out why the richest people in the world own real estate and how they became wealthy. And from there, I just kept expanding my business. We got a lot of clients, had athletes all over, you know, MLB, NFL, NHL asking like, how are you doing this while you're playing? So I just started the company. 64 investments and we expanded to now consulting on real estate. Uh, We're in development now with, uh, you know, 60, 70 unit complexes right now, commercial spaces in general. So now we're just kind of advising athletes across the board and doing development at the same time. Uh, By the way, I'm going to pause that for a second. Shane Bradley, one of our viewers, he's watching in New York. He says, good morning, Peterson squad, almost Friday. And yes, grew up in New York. (laughs) could buy a 30-pack, two steak of potatoes, and corn for the price of a 24 here. It's America. Cheap, cheap, cheap. But let's not talk about health care. But, Bart, if I'm not mistaken, <laughs> did your dad not do that at Maple Ridge? Wasn't he a real estate guy? Uh, my, it, it was actually my uncle was out in, okay. uh, t- out in Kingston, Ontario. He owns a bunch of apartment buildings. And I was trying to figure out, I'm like, this can't figure out how we did it, but there's always a way to do it. So we had found a way to do it with uh, little to no money, actually, after I had purchased those first couple rentals. And I just pretty much learned the business and said, you know what, I'm going to make sure I can learn everything I can to figure out how these guys do it. Because at the end of the day, if everyone does it, there's a way to do it. Just got to figure out how and get creative with your financing and just learn the business, basically. And, you know, grind it and whatever. I wasn't at the rink. I wasn't watching Netflix. I wasn't watching, you know, Roku TV or anything. I was learning all the time, reading books, doing podcasts. And from there, it just expanded and expanded. And now it's got to the point where I knew I I knew hockey wasn't going to last forever, obviously. So I figured if I needed to retire by the time I hit 30, I would be okay. So we'd started the company a couple of years ago. And from then, we've just grown more than I could have could have imagined. 
Darren and I were saying before you came on about Maple Ridge, BC. I said you're the second most famous guy from Maple Ridge. Larry Walker being the first. There's somebody else from there. Is there not a race car driver? Cam Neely. Else? Cam Neely. Ah, okay, he probably trumps all you guys. Is, <laughs> as you that's well know. Sure. Yeah, that's for sure. Anybody else from Maple? Wasn't there a race car driver from there or something? Like, there's a lot of famous people coming out of there. Yeah, there, there right? was. Uh, he passed away when I was really young. I'm still terrible for not knowing his name. Sorry, Moore. Larry Who? Walker. Greg no, Moore. Larry. On the Greg, players' Greg, Greg racing Moore, team. Greg Moore, Greg, oh, Greg Moore. Moore. Oh, that's why you were writing that in, uh, Eddie Bankowski. I thought you were talking about another Greg Moore. Got it. See what we're putting together today? Yeah. And the – so Robin <laughs> and Prince Albert's watching. He says, I'm watching the KHL right now. Minsk and C- CSKA. Let's go Minsk. Uh, what are your so they're are you following that league still, Bart? If you just played in it, I guess yeah, you yeah, are. I'm still following it. Yep, no, yeah. of course. I've still got a lot of buddies over there, and a lot of my clients are actually based in the KHL right now. But yeah, I'm still following them on a daily basis. I got a feeling C- C- CS Scott might win that game. Okay, gotcha. Uh, how was <laughs> Moscow? By the way, I'm watching. I am watching Netflix now at this stage of my life, Bart. And there, it was a scene from Moscow in a show I was just watching this week. I'm like, God, that looks beautiful. I think it was in Designated Survivor was the show. Is it beautiful or is that just on TV? Certain parts of it, absolutely. If you ever get a chance to travel to St. Petersburg, uh, you know, Moscow downtown in general, the Red Square, 100% do it. But there's some there's some places where you would never want to go, honestly, where there are teams in the KHL where we had to fly into where there's not even a hotel in the town where you would stay in like a converted apartment building and, you know, no elevators, nothing. There's some Pretty bad towns there, but overall, if you can get to a St. Petersburg or a downtown Moscow all day long, you should go try it. Just like any town has their bad areas. Exactly. And fr- yeah, and exactly. from producer Clark, when Bartz was in Regina, he was the captain of a team with Jordan Eberle, Jordan Wheel, and Colton Tubert, among others. What was that team like, and what does he remember most about that season? Oh, I mean, at the end of the day, those guys were so young and they were so talented. I remember Wheel was only a 16-year-old kid. Ebbs was only 17. Um, I don't. Even, I think Ebbs had just gotten drafted or he was about to get drafted. And same with Tubi. You know, those guys were so far ahead of their years. And I had actually just reconnected with Colton actually the other day over LinkedIn. And uh, he was telling me what's going on in his life. But just to touch back on that year, I mean, the, the skill that those guys had and, you know, how they – you could tell those guys were going to go on to – bigger and better things it's great to see abs doing so well and wheeler doing so well as well but uh, there was a ton of other guys on that squad too that just made it such a good all-round team but those two definitely stood out the most and you can see why they are where they are in their careers it was a lot of fun and i always enjoyed my time with you barts as you can tell i remembered a lot of it um keep in touch my friend might look you up if we come down to nashville i can't wait until our next visit and i appreciate appreciate the time today merry christmas my friend absolutely all right thanks a lot guys merry christmas to you too Victor Bartley checking in from Music City. And did you see the comments coming in like crazy? You're watching Rod Peterson On Demand. For more of the Rod Peterson Show, visit rodpeterson.com or follow Rod Peterson on social media.